Hi everyone, welcome back. It's my AK Swedish Whiskey Girl. And today we're doing a little bit of an extra video because it's April Fools. And it's <laughs> one of those times a year that I'm always a little bit excited about because it's always fun to see what whiskey brands are going to try and do to kind of just make up something crazy and then see if someone falls for it or not. And this year, it seems. Uh, that you kind of want to treat people in another way uh, to kind of maybe cheer people up a little bit. I know we're in this kind of rut where things are a bit boring and we're hopefully going towards a brighter future where we'll be able to see friends and family and the world will open up again. But in the meantime, perhaps something like this will bring a little bit of a smile to our faces. I know it did to mine anyways, uh, when I heard about these, I, I've been in touch with a few different brands because they've been sending me press releases for uh, various products, which is quite fun. And this one I thought was just really fun. So this is a whiskey from the guys at Atom Brands. And when I this video is coming out, I am allowed to say this uh, because they are actually going out and announcing this idea as an April Fool's joke. But the twist is that it's actually real. So this here is a single malt whiskey with a tonic wine cask finish. This is a 46% ABV, it's a 10 year old. It is a combination uh, or a collaboration between Master of Malt, so the Atom Brands, and the Rhythm and Booze project. Uh, if you haven't seen those guys, what they're doing, they're always doing a lot of fun things, so check them out. But yeah, they just wanted to, it started a bit like a joke. Could we even do that? Uh, but and they did it. <laughs> of course, you can call this Scotch whiskey, but it is from one of the UK's largest distilleries. I have an idea of what it might be, but I'd love to hear your guesses. Please put them in the comments below and see which of the UK's largest distilleries that you think this is from. So it's been matured initially in ex-bourbon casks and then finished in tonic wine. I don't know, uh, and it's a secret, what tonic wine they've used. But for those of you who don't know what tonic wine is, it was a thing kind of that originated in the Buckfast Alley, Alley, <laughs> Abbey, <laughs> an alley, um, the Buckfast Abbey down Devon in the 1800s, I think in the mid 1800s. And the most famous one at the moment, uh, which is quite famous here in Scotland, is Buckfast, which I have here. I've had this bottle for quite a lot of years, and you can see how much I've drunk from it. It's not my favourite, it's very, very sweet. Let me have a little nose. It's, it's this weird nose between red wine and mineral water and like jelly sweets. It's a caffeinated fortified wine, 15% ABV, originally sold with medicinal purposes. That was said that you had three little glasses a day, I think, and that was supposed to make you sure you had a lively blood and a healthy life. I would not recommend anyone to do that. Um, very sweet. And it's kind of known as one of those things that people drink to just get drunk really quickly, uh, which has never really been my thing. So I'll stick to the whiskey, I think. But yeah, so that's a, a thing that they sell now in, well, here in the UK, basically. I think it's a lot, there's a few different brands, but Blackfast, I think, is the biggest one because that's also named after the Abbey where it originated. And it's also based on an old recipe from France. But yes, let's have a little look on the whiskey. Um, and they've of course now released that this is a real thing and you can get a hold of it. But that's not all. They haven't just finished a 10 year old whiskey or single malt whiskey in a tonic wine casks. They've also done it for a 21 year old blended whiskey. I think this 10 year old retails at about 45 pounds pounds and the 21 year old which is limited to I think 21 bottles so it's very very limited is 200 pounds a bottle so something very strange and interesting <laughs> but let's have a look on the nose and see what we can get it is definitely strange on the nose it's I think you get the tonic wine 
I got it more yesterday because we did do a tasting with the team at Master Malta and Rhythm and Booze project where they introduced this to us and I got it more initially. I think because I didn't know what to expect and it was just quite um, quite a lot of it. Today it's more foresty, a little bit toned down, but it's definitely like a funky wine note in it. It's quite sweet. It reminds me a bit of oranges and especially the soft drink, uh, what's it called? Orangina. It's like orange soda. I know some people in the tasting said uh, cola. And I can see that as well. A little bit woody, but it's that kind of sweet, funky, whiny, orangey note that is the most kind of pronounced for me. But let's have a little sip. Slunge of that. I'm happy April Fools. <laughs> I don't mind this. I think it's it tastes nice, uh, <laughs> but it is weird, especially the finish. I am. It is quite orangey to me. I am gonna have a sip of the Buckfast just to let you know what that tastes like, in case no one's tried it. Because I don't like it, I am doing this for you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see how dark it is. And I think in the UK it's sold in a, or in here in Scotland, it's sold in a clear bottle, but in uh, the Republic of Ireland, it's sold in a brown bottle. And there's some slight differences to the recipe. It's like a mineral water meets wine. Very, very sweet. Almost a bit racing-like. Almost a bit, um, with some sort of shop or like a bit like a, a hair salon. I think it's because it's something that you could, will often find in shampoo or in conditioner. Yeah, a bit like a hair salon. <laughs> It's not for me. <laughs> it's um, too sweet, too sweet for me. It's uh, sweet like a liqueur. It's quite similar to a port. Yeah, quite racing like, a little bit port sweet, uh, which is why I think it also works for the whiskey because obviously you can mature whiskey with port casks. Uh, but I would say the finish on this is weirder than anything I've ever tried with a port cask, but quite weird in a good way. It just takes that moment to get used to it. You definitely have like a whiskey sensation of it, which I think is why I like it, because this kind of quirky finish is just... Just like a, a super weird fruity woodiness, that kind of orange is... Like orange soda and wood for me. A little bit of almost like a grassy note as well. I mean, it's just meant to be a bit of fun. <laughs> um, and if you like quirky, then this might be something for you. If you don't like quirky, then I don't think this is for you. Almost a bit like peaches as well. But there's one strange thing in it, especially on the finish. And I just can't pinpoint it, but I think it's that kind of essence of the tonic wine. Yeah. I'll definitely pour this as a mystery drum to a lot of people to see what they think. <laughs> but I do hope that them doing something like this is just a little bit of a... putting a smile to your faces. Just a little bit of a surprise. Um, I've definitely enjoyed experiencing this and I really hope they do something similar in the future just to kind of cheer people up, do something different. So yes, I will uh, share all the kind of April Fool's things that I see uh, with Whiskey Brands on my Instagram today. So if you're curious to see more of those, 
go check that out. I put all the links to my other social channels in the description here below, as well as my affiliate links to Master Malt, but also the Whiskey Exchange and the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society if you want to support the channel that way. I'd of course be super, super grateful. To end this, I just want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon as well. It's great to have you guys with me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you're all having an Happy April Fools. Let me know if you've tried any April Fools whiskies uh, in the comments here below. And I of course hope that you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slangeva, Scotland.